Hello and welcome to BlenderTutor.com. My name is Tom Latvies, and in this uh, video, we're going to go over setting up the proper materials of your newly imported Blender scene so that it will render in cycles. Um, so let's get started. Right away, I'm just going to go ahead and save this really quick. So I'll just say Minecraft. Okay, and basically before we get into it, let's just really quick see what happens when, well first we're going to need a light. So I'm going to bring back, let's see, let's move both of these up. I'm going to change my lamp to a sun. Use nodes. And if you look at it in cycles and we render, you're going to see it'll give you the basic shape and everything and the basic colors, but it's not going to be textured whatsoever. And I mean, for what you're doing, that might be okay. You might want just like the cool look of Minecraft without the textures, but. For the most part, you're probably going to want them. Also, if you look at like the grass, you can see that oops, they're just little planes, basically, because they're just uh, they have alpha channels that aren't being used right now. So, if we if we actually switch over to the uh, Blender internal engine, you could see that it, it's actually natively set up to work with the uh, internal engine instead. You can see actually that the alpha channels already work. Everything's textured. Um, and if we were to render it really quick, I want to move my camera over here. If we were to render that really quick, it would actually you know, it's a little dark, but you can see that it's actually rendering just fine. Um, but I want to use cycles. So what we're going to have to do is it's, it's pretty simple, but it's just a little time consuming. It basically automatically creates a material for every type of, and basically all the grass objects in your entire scene are one piece. And then all of the stone objects are one piece and all of the dirt objects are one piece and the same with all the water and same with everything trees. So in that case, it's pretty simple because all you have to do is set up the material one time and it works for everything, but you're going to have to set up each one separately. So let's start with grass. First thing you're going to have to do is hit the use nodes button on the material panel. And right away, we're just going to go to color. We could either go into the mo node editor or for this, since it's faster, you just uh, click on that little button right next to the color, choose image texture. And now if we actually here, let's bring up the preview. You can see it's got the uh, purple. I don't have a texture color right now. So if you do this little drop down, you can see it already has a bunch of textures loaded. They're just not associated with it. So you can see they're all numbered like all the way dot oh one all the way up to like what 20 you don't have to actually pick a specific one you can choose any of them i go to the tut tutorial world dash rgba basically it renames the texture to whatever your world was called dash rgba dot png i'm going to select that and now you can see that i got a texture on there now and i could uh i have a texture on here so now if I were to go into rendered view, it's still pretty dark, but you can see I actually have texture on my, uh, my grass. So we're basically going to have to just do that pretty quickly for all of them. Dirt, same thing. So image texture. Scroll down, select it, there you go. Uh, but let's actually do one that requires a, l a couple extra steps. For the 
for the trees, they would have an alpha channel so that you could see through the leaves. So we're going to actually have to use more than one texture. So let's go to use nodes. And then let's drag down an extra section right here. Go to the node editor. And for one, let's uh, set this up like we normally would. So we'll go grab that right there. And we'll see that our trees now have their texture. But where it should be uh, see-through, it's actually black right now. So what we're going to have to do is set up a pretty basic material right here in the nodes. So let's grab a, a transparent, put that right there, and then a mix. And we're actually going to want to switch this. So we're going to put the diffuse with the uh, image texture on it on the bottom shader, put the transparent in the top. And then we could duplicate this, bring it up here. And we're going to actually want the very top, this like black and white little one right here that's called the dash alpha. And you're going to use the color in there into the factor right here. And now if we, so that in this view it changes. If you just click on another texture, it'll switch back. But now if we were to render this, it's still a little dark, but you can see I'm actually seeing through those leaves now, which is what we want. So um, you're going to also have to do that with anything like the the grass, the tall grass, or even these um, dandelion little boxes. They're all going to need that same setup. So. It's pretty simple, but it's just a little time consuming. So I'm going to go ahead and set those up really quick. So I'm going to, I'm just going to pause it and come back when it's ready. Okay. So I think I have, um, fixed all of the materials. I've done all of them except for the water. And I'm just going to go over the water separately because I did something uh, a little different for that because I wanted to have some reflectivity instead of just the material. So you could go in and select the water material and um, use nodes, and I'll still give it its still give it its texture, and that's just going to give it a diffuse. But I, I want to have you know some reflective qualities like actual water. So I'm going to give it a glossy shader. And we'll give it a mix shader. And then what I'll do is I'll also grab a vector bump. And we'll put that into the height. Put that into the normal for the diffuse. And I'll put it in for the reflective. And I'm going to change it down to like 0.3. I'll do this to point 0.1 just so it has some nice shine to it. And um, let's see how that looks now. So let's like go over by some water. And there we go. We're getting some reflection. And obviously you could change that how you like. Maybe it's not reflective enough. Put to like 0.5 so you get some more reflection off of it. Um, the other thing that I did that didn't work out great, but you could do it is with the with the water selected, since it's its own object, I actually put a displace um, modifier on it and I put that mid level all the way up to one and then put this down to like point zero seven or something and we're gonna create a new texture and honestly I mean that's probably fine you could go tweak it in this texture panel displace texture um, adjust the size till it's to your liking 
maybe a 0.3, just so you have some nice little bumpiness to it. And affect the depth, maybe a two or three will be good. And then you could just select smooth shading for the water. Um, the problem with the water, it, the, basically the problem with all of this is that it is, um, none of these vertices are actually connected to each other. Like each face, I believe, is completely a separate piece. So if you were to try to put a, say, subdivision surface on it, it's not going to really work out the way we'd like it to. So I ended up not being able to do that. Now let's let's just look at how that looks anyway. It might work. It's, it's a little I mean it kind of works for the aesthetic of the blockiness, but I don't think it looks that great. So I, I kept that down to like a minimum 0.05. Just so it had some variation in the uh, height of the water. And what you could even do beyond this, if you want, is mess around with say a transparent setting so you kind of see through the water as well. I didn't get into anything like that, but it wouldn't be too difficult to just add in a um, transparent and then do another mix. Throw that in here, throw that in there. And maybe like a point two and see what that looks like. I don't think it's gonna look very good because there's nothing really below it. Oh uh, maybe actually it kinda looks okay. I guess there's some it, it kinda looks a little more like ice than like water right now because there's no thickness to it. Like it doesn't get any darker the farther down you go, but you can mess around with that and uh, maybe you could get some results that look okay. I'd maybe lower it to, uh, instead of 0.2, I mean, just even more subtle than that. So maybe like a 0.1 or even less. Okay, but once you have your materials set up the way you like them, uh, let's let's place the camera now. So I was saying I wanted it around here. So I'll just use Control Alt Zero on the number pad to place that. And what I'm gonna do is actually widen the view, the focal length of the lens, so I could see a lot more. Which is also kind of similar to how your view in the actual game is. And if you double tap R, you can kind of free rotate. I'm holding down shift to uh, move slower because if you don't hold shift, it's a lot quicker to move around. So if you hold down shift, it'll uh, move slowly for you. And uh, let's see. Oh, it's a little too low. I kind of want to get... Some of the trees like looking down on it maybe something like that and then let's set up the Sun um, maybe from a side angle and I'll give it a little bit of yellow and then I'll also duplicate that move it along the X Rotate it along the Z 180. I'm going to turn off cast shadows. I'm going to turn this down to like one. I'm going to make it maybe a three. So it's a lot, it's basically, the larger the size of the sun or any lamp, the softer it'll be. It won't be like a harsh point light. It'll be a big, soft, like area light. So I'm going to put it up to like a three. I'm going to make it kind of blue. So it's like blue, blue sky or something. Really, especially in my last scene that had a lot of trees in it, it was very dark because the trees were shading everything. So I had to put a lot of light in there. With this one, we might not have to do it so much. 
I'm gonna save this real quick. And, uh, well, before I render it out, let's just take a look. Okay, so yeah, I mean, that's looking pretty okay. Uh, let's really quick tweak our light path. So I'm going to change that down to, since this isn't going to be like a super realistic render, I'm going to maybe put this down to a four for max bounces and then a zero for minimum. Put on no caustics and samples for my render. I'm going to do, let's do 150 just for this. And then for performance, since I'm using my GPU, put it up to 256 by 256. Save that. And then uh, just give it a quick render. And what I ended up doing for my final scene was I, I did a couple things. I used multiple render layers. I did one for the, the basically the Minecraft world itself. And then I, I did a second one for a sky background. And I could actually really quickly go over how I did that. Um, I have to wait for this to finish rendering real quick. So I'm going to pause and then come back when we're done. Okay, so that finished. Took about a minute to render. Um, as you can see, it used the uh, basically my world settings, my dark gray sky color as the background. But if I wanted that to be basically an alpha channel so that I could use a background image. It's a pretty quick and easy way to do that in the render settings. For one, you're going to want to use RGBA. That A is for alpha, which is basically see-through. Um, so switch it from RGB to RGBA and output. Um, and then, where was it? For here, I just changed that to transparent. And then right here, there's a little checkbox. Click that as well. And then uh, now I'm going to clear that out and just render a little section like up here. And if I render that, you can see now I have that checkerboard in the background, which means it's an alpha channel. Cool. Um, so, I mean, I don't, I would not by any means call this a finished scene, but this is basically just the basics of getting your Minecraft world in to Blender and then setting it up so that it'll work with cycles. So that's about it. Um, I hope you learned something and I hope you go create some really awesome, uh, renders and animations. And if you do just, uh, post it in the comments or on YouTube. So thanks for watching, and I will uh, talk to you guys later. Bye.